Good evening and welcome back to another live episode of Red Tinted Glasses. It is your favourite dysfunctional duo. Um, so apologies for the slight delay due to some technical difficulties with my laptop, but dysfunctional duo seems appropriate given the interview that we saw this week in Scottish football featuring Stephen Naismith and Frank McAvoy, doesn't it, Callum? Oh, that was good, wasn't it? It's like the Spider-Man meme uh, where they're just pointing at each other. Um I honestly don't have a clue what's going on over there, and uh, hopefully it ends in disaster. It seems destined for it. It does, and I, I felt this episode was going to end in disaster the way we were going about 30 seconds before going live. Uh, but it was organised as Hibs Defence tonight, um, already ensuring it, um, Scottish football are a laughing stock in Europe with our dismal defeat in Andorra, meaning that anything we do won't be trumped after that result tonight. Well, you'd hope not. We'd have to go some serious, uh, some serious doing to to beat that. Uh, I messaged friend of the show Michael just during the game, saying, uh, "Hi, Michael, how's your, how's your day?" And he said, "Calm, shut up." And um, it's god awful, isn't it? And he went, "Not even that good." So that about sums everything up. To be fair, I got a lol out of him after sending him a meme of somebody trying to juggle a ball um, after the second goal. So I think that was as good as I was going to get out of him. I thought I better not probe him anymore. Um, but Calum, it's fair to say it's been an eventful week on Twitter since we were last live um, on the show. We finally got a new signing. So if you are tuning into RTG for the first time, the um, previous episode to this was a getting to know um, episode of Or Dadia with uh, Yossi Medina. So go back and listen to what Yossi had to say about our latest recruit. Although depending when you're listening to this, hopefully there's another recruit in. Um, but we've had statements from supporters clubs and fans calling other fans to act like adults. I mean, the supporters club in question, they wouldn't have been the first one that I would have had down to make a fool of themselves on social media this season because... Well, our supporters clubs and there's maybe a couple of others that I could certainly name up there that would be more likely suspects. Oh, I definitely would have had uh, the one we go on uh, as as top top candidate for that. But it was carnage, wasn't it? And you know, um, you know, we're desperate to talk about stuff and desperate for signings and any sort of news at all when uh, such such a trivial thing uh, gained such traction. Uh, discussing a supporters club statement was. Uh, but a new low for this summer. Yeah, I mean, it just showed how much tension was in the air that the fact that people were getting wound up by information being shared from a supporters club AGM. I mean, I really don't know what people were expecting. And come on, I mean, Alan Burrows himself wouldn't have been saying half of the stuff that was disclosed if he didn't expect some of that information to leave the room. And the fact as well that Alan Burrows even had to come out and make a comment about it just summed up probably the last week on social media basically and then he bodied gorgy analysis the other day um, and yeah. me, me and that person have had a cut bit of to and fro uh this summer and then uh the big dog mr burrows came bounding over and uh, uh gave him a bit of medicine as well i mean we are desperate for stuff if this is what we're talking about but uh, we, we delayed this live until today by the way uh, in case there was any signing, he's nothing, no point. You should have just done it yesterday. Yeah, I know. Great decision by you because you did say, what is there even to talk about? Um, we'll give the Dons an extra 24 hours to sign somebody. Uh, although I did see a few tweets from um, people that had watched STV News. Chris Harvey kind of alluded to the fact that there's one close. You know, I was hoping that we were maybe going to get to use the breaking news banner tonight on tonight's show, but in typical RTG fashion, we know fine well that it'll probably be now announced tomorrow. Um, but on Ordadia, Callum, uh, obviously I, I spoke to Yossi last Friday. What was your thoughts on the signing overall? Obviously an area that um, we felt was needed, right-sided defender. And since that signing as well, we've also seen the departure um, of Jaden Richardson going out on loan for the season two Stockport County. Um, I guess that's a, a one we kind of saw coming. But what's your thoughts on the arrival of the Israeli international? Interesting. Uh, that one's one that sort of seemed to move pretty quickly, uh, despite sort of presumed uh, uh, issues with, with red tape, which is a phrase that's been banded around recently. Um, but it moved pretty quickly, and I can't say I've ever uh, I, I know much about the chap at all. In fact, all I know uh, is because of uh, the interview, uh, the, the podcast with Yossi. So uh, I find that very beneficial. Um, I think it would seem to be a step up. 
Um, you know, he's is really an athlete, an international. Um, he has played in group stages, uh, very experienced. Um, I think the fact it's it's a loan with an option to buy. Um, of a, of a, I was going to say modest fee, but in Scotland, uh, for anyone outside of the community, I suppose it's not a modest fee. Any fee is not a modest fee. Um, it seems smart though because it works out. Then we get the opportunity to keep him, uh, well, and we get first say on that, which is which I think is excellent. And on Jaden Richardson as well, uh, going going out on loan seems to be the best thing for him. I think we saw mm. last season that maybe wasn't quite up to the standard that we would have expected or wanted and a chance to go and play every week at League Two as well, a decent level, build more experience and uh, I think experience is definitely what he needs because he does have specific attributes that, that could make him a very, very good player for us, or not very good player, but a decent player for us and um, it just needs sort of fine-tuning and experience and hopefully he'll get that and if not, then at least if he performs well, he might be in a better position for us to then sell him uh, and hopefully not make a loss yeah i know obviously as well we've when he comes back or if he comes back i'm sure people will be shouting at their tellies tonight um would be the fact that he's still got time left on his contract but um on or himself um you know i was encouraged by what yossi had to say Um i do take from more of what he said he is definitely more suited at the right side of defense and i think that'll probably put the uh to the end of the experiment of Shaden Morris being right wing back, um, which we've seen recently, um, feeling very brave at the weekend, donning those pink boots. But I've still got some concerns on the, the left side of defence, I guess more on that um, shortly. But my favourite comment that I saw on the, the signing of Ordadio, and I don't know if he's tuning in tonight, um, was from Skipper uh, on Twitter. Um, and it was an exchange with Joel Sked who commented on the uh, amount of silverware that or was wearing in his signing photo. And the, the reply was just simple, that it was uh, more silverware than in Hearts' trophy cabinet. And it was just simple, but quietly effective. And it gave me a good chuckle when I, when I came across that tweet. Absolutely enjoy that. I did. Uh, I, 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 he was um, branding some amount of bling, wasn't he? I quite like it. He seems to, you know, got a little bit of attitude about himself. Quite a fan of that. Um, hopefully... Hopefully, uh, won't be the only silverware he's touching this season. Yes, fingers crossed. As winning the lot, I remember you saying so confidently a few seasons ago. And yeah. we'll see how confident you are when we um, go live next week, of course, um, which will be our final live for a while, probably. Um, and we'll be joined by um, Talk Levy host Ewan Rankin as well to, to preview that opening fixture. Um, of the Premiership season. Um, and on Jaden Richardson as well, just my thoughts on that. Um, kind of agree, Callum, in terms of him going out and getting minutes um, is good for Jaden and retrospectively, I guess, good for us if he performs well and it, we are looking to offload him. Or he goes away, learns a bit more about his own game uh, and playing a different style and comes back to us a better player. Because with that Ordadia deal being a loan deal, if it wasn't to work out for Or then we have that option of Jaden coming back. Probably strikes fear into a lot of us just now, but it's that safety of that deal with with Oren and putting Jaden out on loan as well. Absolutely. Yeah, it's all very smart. Um, because you know, or Daddy a deal might work out fantastically, then we sign him and you've still got him and Nicky Devlin, then where does that leave Jaden Richardson? But if he's mm-hmm. been out on loan and performs, uh, then we can maybe get a bit of cash for him. So it, it's smart business. Uh from the club on the on the right side of the of the defense now we fucking need some on the left side desperately yeah and i think the the left side is still in desperate need of some attention and really kind of highlighted by the first goal that we conceded at, at the weekend past there as the don suffered their first defeat of preseason action going down 2-0 to preston backed by quite a terrific away support minus you callum um but Jack McKenzie, a player that continues to to split opinion in the Aberdeen support, probably mainly towards the negative side, but once again, probably with the same amount of ability in his right foot um, as I do. Um, you can tell he's a very left, left-footed left player because it wasn't the greatest of clearances from him and we really didn't cover ourselves in glory on the follow-up from it, take nothing away from the goal. But again, you don't want to be overly critical given preseason is about minutes rather than results but if that defending and defense that we lined up with doesn't have alarm bells ringing 
when what are we nine days out from the start of the season? Mm. I don't know what will. No, I mean, could the game could have been very very different had we had a fully fit? Well, all our defenders fully fit. All them, all of them were available. Not the case, and uh, I think people did spot uh, Reese Williams was back out on the grass, which is encouraging. Whether he'll be involved this coming weekend against Charlton, I don't know. And um, I was told uh, by my brother that Alex McDonald expected himself to be back in a week, and that was about this time last week. So whether he'll be fit to to, to feature at all um, on Saturday, let alone um, against Livingston, however, remains to be seen. But yes, we, we absolutely do we do need um, uh, left sided defenders. Jack did not cover himself in glory, unfortunately. I'm sure he won't want to watch it back too many times, but I say it was an excellent finish. Uh, and it looked like Kelrich was perhaps a little bit unsighted. Uh, I think he dived very late for it, but even then, would he have got there without knocking himself out off the post? I don't know. Yeah, he did make a, a good save uh, later on in the, the first half, although I don't really know how much he knew about the save. But again, it wasn't really some great defending. The The second goal as well kind of comes down our left. The, the kind of build-up play to it is predominantly left-sided before the finish so for me that's a that's a bit of a concern um and you know positive to hear the word on the street from your your brother surrounding Angus McDonald and I guess this weekend's trip to um Charlton will really be an indication for many what our defense is going to look like a week out from Livingston because of course Angus McDonald and Reese Williams haven't even had the chance to play together um this season um yet in the in the warm-up games and if we don't even see Angus McDonald or Reese Williams involved um, this weekend against Charlton, how much hope do we have of them featuring, especially for the likes of Reese Williams with the the injury to him, um, you know, being a, a back issue that seemed to go down into his calves? And what concerns me around that injury, and and slightly uh, on the Angus McDonald as well, is the kind of radio silence coming out of mm. of the club surrounding those injuries. And I suppose. You, you could look at that two ways in the fact that Barry Robson is not going to come out and say, oh, both these guys are out for three, four weeks. And, you know, the likes of me and you are running around with our hands up in the air thinking that our season's over before it's even started and kind of giving the game away to the opposition. But equally, he's not coming out and saying, you know, they're they're going to be fine for Livingston and kind of calming the nerves. It's kind of probably the measure of Barry Robson and the type of person he is that he keeps his cards so close to his chest. He does, and I like it, despite how nervous we are feeling. Um, it would be excellent if at least one of them could be involved uh, against Charlton. And uh, failing that, perhaps another defender, uh, a new one, in the yeah. way of a massive Serb. <laughs> yeah, a massive Serb, and that's what we're hoping we will see um, signed. Um, well, if he's signed tomorrow, I'll be interested to see if he plays on Saturday, because... There hasn't been much talk either around the the clearance and permits that Ordadia needs um, to see if he can even feature this weekend as well and um, keep my fingers crossed that he gets those and can at least get some minutes with his new teammates because, like I said, Shaden Morris at a right wing back is not exactly something that fills me with confidence and Jack Milne at centre back as well as... I, can you see him starting against Livingston? I think it would be very unlikely. Um, you like to think we would have at least one centre back in before then, and hopefully one of Reese Williams and McDonald would be fit fit to play, um, at least fit to start, uh, even if they don't complete the full ninety. Um, however, I suppose if Jack Milne's ever going to make it, then he's going to be tested at at some point. So it might be now or never at this yeah. point at his age. Would you think? Yeah, I, I think so, but it would concern me if that is going to be our starting centre-back for the season. But again, that's kind of the way our cards have been dealt with some of the injuries that we've seen to to both Angus McDonald and, and Reese Williams. And heaven forbid we pick up a serious injury this weekend at Charlton. I mean, imagine if it was Jack Mill and then we just, just had no centre-backs whatsoever. I suppose Anthony Stewart's still around. Um, we might be forced to play at, at this rate. Well, that's a, that's a point I actually had highlighted as well from um, regular viewer uh, and commenter on these lives, Kaiser, who who noted that both Vinny and uh, Anthony Stewart were at Preston, but were 
two out of the three players that didn't actually feature alongside Jaden Richardson. So a lot of people drawing conclusions. I think more so around um, Anthony Stewart and Jaden that their times at, at the club were up and well, it certainly proved to be the case for this season anyway for Jaden. I think maybe people reading too much into that around Vinny and well, maybe Anthony Stewart at this present moment with the injuries to both Angus and um, Reese just now. I don't know. You might have felt if Stuart was going to be sticking around that he would have featured uh, at some point. Vinny perhaps uh, didn't uh, come off come off the bench or anything because, well, who was he going to replace? We we didn't have enough forward players for him to replace. To be honest, um, we would have been ended up playing a two four whatever. I've, I don't know. I'm <laughs> two four four. Yeah, two four four. The first four four two. And Vinny had to come on. So. <laughs> Um, that that maybe is playing into it, but it does concern me a little bit because I really want the little muscle boy thing to work out. And if, well, you can tell you were bored this week as well because you don't decided worry. to run a couple of polls uh, on the uh, Red Tinted Glasses Twitter page. If you don't follow us on Twitter, um, it's at RTG underscore podcast. And I'm going to keep talking to give you time to bring up that information on your phone as well. Um, so for those of you that maybe are not on Twitter or don't follow us on social media, will have uh, seen or not seen the fact that Callum ran two polls this week. Um, mm -hmm. So we'll start with, I'm going to go with the most controversial one and the one that certainly picked up a lot of opinion. Mm -hmm. um, what was the title of the poll, Callum, and what was the results? I presume you're talking about the Liam Scales one. Yes, I am. Okay, okay. I asked the question, uh, and two over 2,000 of you answered, uh, would you have Liam Scales back if it was only on another season-long loan and not permanent? Now, despite, I would say, 90% of the replies being uh, the loud minority, uh, going by the result of the poll, and being furious at the, even the suggestion of such a thing, 69% um, of people voted yes, they would have him back on another season-long loan, 31% saying no. What are your thoughts on that, Glenn? And, and what, what, what would you have? Would you have him? Uh, see, I don't know if I would have him on loan. And there was a lot of, I thought there was a lot of excellent points um, made on both sides of, of the scale. Pardon the pun. Actually, no pun intended at all. Um, with, you know, a, a couple of replies being the fact that I would rather have him for 34 games than no games. Um, but there was a couple of points that, that were kind of made regarding, you know, potentially cup games. And cup games seems to be our main avenue um, to, to trophies this season. And ultimately, we're more than likely going to have to come up against Celtic at some point to, to win a cup or Celtic and Rangers. And to immediately disadvantage ourselves in, say, a semi-final, final final because we can't play Liam Scales just seems crazy. And that point kind of annoys me about the loan deal. I'd actually, if they weren't to loan him to us, I'd say, well, tough luck. He's playing against you. That's the only way we're agreeing to a loan. But I was also told this week that there's been a club that have made a bid to Celtic for Liam Scales. And that bid was for £800,000. Now, if we are, if we are the club that is rumoured to be doing so now. I don't know the, the club involved, but it could obviously be somebody from down down south. But if we are playing £800,000 for Liam Scales, Dave Cormack has really taken a shine to those uh, sales of the new tops as proudly modelled by yourself with the home one tonight. Thank you. How do you think it looks? It looks good, but still not, yeah. still not a fan. Well, my dad said I need to get a size up next time, so thanks for that <laughs> deal. Uh, <laughs> oh, God, too many pie reviews. Uh, the season's not even started yet. It's only going to get worse. Liam Scales, 800,000 would be too much for my liking. Surely there is, you know, a, you know, a cousin of the big fucking Serb uh, that can swing his left foot that could be available for a fraction of the price. Uh, 800,000 would be ridiculous for a man that looked good for half a season um, and seemingly can't play in a two, um, or at least not very well in in a in two centre back, uh, a two centre back formation. So that would be a lot of money. Um, I would, I would 
possibly have him back on loan at this point, but I'm concerned that maybe some of my answers are just now. I'm desperate. I am very much concerned that in terms of left-sided defenders, we have Jack McKenzie, Kieran Nguyenia, and if you can call Johnny Hayes a defender, you've got him. And and, and neither of them can really play centre-back at all. Maybe McKenzie could play left centre-back in a three. I'm just a bit worried about the state we're in right now. Um, and I did wonder that that was going to be the reason why you would be happy to have him back on loan because you're just desperate for a signing. But there was a, a point um, from Muttonman 1983 um, where he said yes, but it was caveated with the, hopefully the club have alternative mm. options being assessed as well. Yeah. And there was a, a few answers um, around that as well with the fact that just going for another loan deal would be kind of lazy recruitment um, because we're just plugging a gap and the fact that he's still not out of contract I think at the end of next season means that if Celtic so happen to want him back we've just gone and improved him for yet another season for Celtic and there was another argument I, I was having with again friend of the show Colin Watt about strengthening and weakening our like own team given mm. the fact that would we and I think someone else replied something similar about signing um Liam Scales on a permanent and you know speaking about evaluation where would we want to spend you know let's say we spend half a million on Liam Scales that right. is potentially a lot of money to a club like Aberdeen that is nothing to a club like Celtic but Celtic would probably invest that half a million better than a club mm. like Aberdeen would you what would your thoughts be on that uh well yeah they would invest it better but it would also probably be a fraction of uh the transfer fee that they had spent on some J League team of the season player uh, who just turns out to be absolutely brilliant um i don't know it is very tough i suppose there is this oh, i don't think he'll ever be good enough to play for Celtic at this point and um, but then you're thinking oh you know, why should we have him then? Well, because they can, you know, they're earning 40 million or whatever from the Champions League every year. Um, and we're not. It's a very difficult one. But if we do sign him on loan and he doesn't go for that 800,000, then he's only got a year left on his deal. Then we're in a decent position to say, well, a cut price fee, essentially, because mm. you're going to lose him for nothing otherwise, perhaps. And also, you know, there is a lot of, football players out there there's probably a lot that would fit the mold however finding them uh is a problem and also finding people with the right personality as well and clearly you know a, a lot of people at the club know Liam Scales by Robson knows him very well he would slot straight back in there wouldn't be in a bedding in period he's been involved in pre-season he's not been injured there's all those points to think about as well yeah exactly I guess he would provide balance to our defense i'm just thinking of some scales puns i can chuck in here before i move on to the next topic but you're right he does know of course the team he knows the surroundings he knows the league and yes he would bring that you know stability to our defense but at the same time it's that decision on that loan deal because if celtic were to suddenly have a, a center back crisis we're not protected by him going back unless of course we we put in that clause into the the loan deal but it, it's a difficult one and i think you know barry robson has the mindset of most fans and the fact that he would rather have liam scales for for 34 games than, mm. than no games at all but I, again i would like to think that all our eggs aren't in one basket you know kind of if we go back to a player we were speaking about last week in antonio teklich and now we're maybe scrambling around for a second choice kind of that point i made it a few minutes ago was the fact that you know, I hope that there are other options being equally assessed. But um, I'm going to come to a comment that, that came in um, a while ago from Gregor Stevens because this is a rumour I've also heard um, this week. So interesting to see it come up in the comments um, today and we'll probably send most of you that are against Celtic loanies coming in uh, into a frenzy. And it was uh, Rudy Vata's son coming in on loan. Um, he currently plays for Celtic B and it's Rocco Vata. Um a player that seemed to really hit the heights uh, in the Lowland League last season. And um, I, again, on, in speaking to Colin Watt, um, I know he rates him very highly and a, a lot of um, 
Celtic fans seem to be tipping him as the, the next breakout star. Um, but as I said, fat a load of shite if we're loading another Celtic player and developing another Celtic winger. But um, certainly one that wasn't kind of on a lot of people's radar. Um, it, it popped up from, from Colin and it, interesting to see it in the comments again tonight. Despite the fact I love my rumours, I am so far out of the loop because that's twice in the past week I've seen something where people are like, oh, that, well, one of them was, oh, that'll be Ramadani away then. And that was mm. after they seemed to have like debunked the myth that let Jade bid uh, 1 million euros. He's not gone. But I was like, where are people seeing this? This is nonsense. What's going on? I've not seen anything about it other than people just saying that's him away. And then also this Rocco Vata thing. So I am so out of the loop. It's unbelievable. But. Yeah, very highly thought of, but he's very young. What is he, like 17, 18? Yeah. Uh, no, no, because he probably will be good enough to play for Celtic at that moment stage, and we're just this little stepping stone we're helping him develop. No, no. <clears throat> well, and I suppose no. we... No, I was going to say, I suppose we've got our own 16, 17-year-olds that are, I'm sure, good enough to, to step into the, the first team. And I guess on certainly if we're looking at the, the left side of defence, um, I know a player that's kind of been grabbing a lot of attention in the under-18 squads pre-season games and impressed in the, the game up at Keith as well was Brandon Hamilton. So interesting to see if he continues his rise this season and, and we see him involved in the first team at any point um, this season. But, you know, we're certainly getting that to almost that desperation stage. Um, but, you know, it, it shouldn't matter on their their age if they're good enough get them involved mm, yes but then he'll become very good and win Celtic the league and then be so oh no I'm not I'm not speaking way. about uh, sorry oh. I'm not speaking about Rocco there I was speaking uh, about oh Brandon. yes Someone, you're supposed yes. to keep up on my chain of thought there sorry I apologize <laughs> uh yeah if they're good enough get them in if he is good enough is a different question I mean we've not seen him against any no respect Keith uh, decent quality opposition although apparently he is very very highly thought of which is encouraging um, but I mean I don't know We're, this is how desperate we are right now we are scraping the barrel a little bit in terms of should we just give this 18 year old a chance for the season <laughs> sign a fucking left back please <laughs> it's not hard um, and I know a few of you in the comments tonight are also discussing the possibility of Matty Pollock um, coming back with the fact that he only featured for half an hour last night um, in their preseason game against Crystal Palace. Still got, what's that, two, three years left on his current deal at Watford. Um, again, this is maybe a deal that would go down towards the, the back end of the, the transfer window. But I don't really like what position we're kind of in just now. As I said, you know, nine days out from the season. and. I, I think I've got the comments starred from David McLennan where he said that the team doesn't really seem stronger than the end of last season. Um, any new signings will still be learning in the games that count. Obviously, um, referring to the fact that we've only got one preseason game left before the the real stuff gets underway. You want to say something there? Liam Scales wouldn't be learning. He slots straight back in, just saying. Well, you can just keep saying that. Um, but would you agree, um, as Roy makes his second appearance of the podcast tonight, do you, do you, uh, um, he's more appearances than we've got signings at the minute. Um, do you agree that the team doesn't seem stronger than the end of last season at, at this moment in time? Um, I suppose in terms of personnel alone, it's, I guess, it's similar. I would edge towards maybe it is slightly better. Because Esther Sockler has come in, that's more competition in the forwards areas, and um, certainly an improvement you'd like to think so far. Or on Marley Watkins, we've got Finney back, not a new signing, but we've got him back. And um, good competition if we're going to play players in the wide areas. And um, Clark Clarkson been here on a permanent, obviously a bonus, but not really not an improvement in quality. Just the same person. Uh, and Graham Shinney as well. Am I forgetting anyone else? Uh, at this point, or Dadia, yeah, Nicky Devlin, Ross McCrory. It's probably too early to tell what the, the, the variation is going to be between that. But I suppose then at least we have two at least decent options at right back. So maybe the mm -hmm. depth is arguably getting slightly better in some areas. Yeah, arguably the depth's there, but the problem right now, um, as you kind of referred to on that Ross McCrory comparison, is we don't at this moment in time, know if the quality is going to be any better. I mean, obviously, we know what Nicky Devlin can bring in terms of Scottish football, the ins and outs. 
Um, but I can. I hope Ewan's not listening to this episode. But with the greatest respect, there is a, a jump in difference between playing for Livingston than there is playing for for Aberdeen. And I'm sure Nicky Devlin knows that himself. Um, and just hopefully that he can kind of carry on his good form from um, Livingston. But I am a big fan of his um, behaviour. If you uh, and again, if you're on social media and have seen the behind the scenes clip from. Um, the media day that the club had at Pataudry and the fact that Nicky Devlin's um, goal celebration meme seems to be him mocking Graham Shinney from last season's game at Pataudry. Yeah, it's good to see the lads getting on, isn't it? Yeah, it's just love. Signs of players, stop posting these things. As much as I enjoy them, <laughs> at least throw in one sign of anyone. And I know. Yeah, I can enjoy it. I know, and I even get I even get wound up as well when it says Aberdeen have signed, and then it's someone for the women's team. I'm like, oh come on, like with the greatest respect. I I know obviously they're looking to strengthen for their season ahead, but I'm like, this is not the information I was hoping for. We'll get there. I know. I know. Uh, it's going to be really annoying when slow. Right, shall we talk about Slob- Slob- Slobodan Rubizic? Yeah, if you can get no if you can get his name fact, out. Yeah. yeah, if I get his name out. Um, He's going to be announced soon, you would think. Uh, how are you feeling about that? It, it's a defender. Obviously, we know little about him. We might have to uh, pull in the help of Richard again. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, signing from Novi Pazar um, for a reportedly very modest fee uh, in the six figures, however. Um, a centre-back who's been involved in pre-season, I think. Encouraging? It, encouraging, yes, but again, as kind of been highlighted by a few people around paperwork issues uh, and visa issues, if it's going to take some length of time for Ordadia to get those kind of issues resolved, are we kind of waiting for those to be resolved before Slobodan's announced, or are we just going to announce it and then we've got to have that wait for that red tape to be to be cleared? He will bring undoubted height to the defence but the question is is where does he play because we've got Angus McDonald and Reese Williams and you would probably have expected Reese Williams to be coming here to play regularly um, I just wonder if one of them one of those three in Slobodan Reese or Angus will become a left-sided centre-back and I don't know how comfortable either of them uh, either three of them will feel on the left side of defence and again goes to that concern that we've always had about playing players out of position or just shoehorning players in for the sake of being able to get them on the pitch yes correct concerned however depth required lots of games already had some injuries we need players who are first team ready uh, to come in as and when required and um, I suppose should one of them play in the left side? You'd like to think Reese Williams is probably uh, the t- most technically gifted to adapt to that. Uh, however, if we're going to play three centre backs and all of them are right footed, that is the fear. Yeah, that that's a huge concern, and obviously as well with with Reese's injury being kind of back related, that also does kind of cause concern especially looking ahead to that Livingston game and again with the the pitch in question as well how ready he would be to kind of come in on that that surface so again kind of puts that pressure on you're bringing in a new signing that will be playing with his new teammates for the first time and as you know a few of you have said in the comments tonight the games that now matter um but I'm sure you'd just be delighted at the fact that we've made a signing yes that's true um, by the way, uh, if, if we, I, I propose if we've not, still not signed anyone officially by next Wednesday, then we just let Rory come on here for an hour and just say whatever he likes. All he would do is build Lego and show it off. But, Sounds I mean, quality. Arguably better people, than what we're doing right now. <laughs> a lot of people would argue that's more entertaining than this show anyway. Um, there's a comment, and I, I, I can't remember it being said, but, but Chilling says, did Barry not say that he wants two players for every position? I see you nodding your head there, Callum. I don't think we're quite covered um, for two players in every position unless we're counting some of these youth players. No, uh, we are not. And that is a bit of a concern now that we're just over a week away um, from from the uh, start of the league season. That is a worry. Um, and 
some of our lack of depth has particularly been highlighted to me uh, when I've been trying to prepare my fantasy team. Uh, we said I had a league last season. Glenn, we're not talking about this by now. Sh- should we have one for this season? Yeah, I'm sure I could restart the league again for this season, but I'm going to make a rule on the fact that no fantasy robots can win the league this year because the person who won the RTG league last season was um, somebody from, I think he was from India, and you know, was one of those players that just studies fantasy football Wally. every day of the week, and his team won quite comfortably in the end. So it's got to be uh, somebody not of that model and make that wins the league. I mean, it's commitment to the cause. There's not even like money on the line or anything. No. Just loves winning fantasy football. And Ariel printed Pataudry and he was very keen to make sure he collected his prize for it um, as well. But um, fair play to him. But, you know, we'll, we'll look at getting the league restarted this season. Have you entered the fantasy money league that Martin Stone's got running? I have indeed. That was for the English Premier League. I think I'm happy with what I've got so far. Barring any major signings, I think I'm happy. Um, my problem is always like remembering to do to do it because I'll, I'll forget once and I'm like, oh, that's the whole thing fucked and just give up. Uh, or then I'm like, oh, no, it's fine. I can still save it and I forget it the next week again. So I need to remember when there's money on the line. Yeah, to be fair, I remember more about that one than the Scottish one, but that's because last season the Scottish app was terrible and I'm glad they've gone back to making it much more simple. You can just enter the one team into multiple leagues this season instead of mucking around with one team per league so it's good to see that they've actually listened to to the feedback so i think well that because my team was also terrible last season i gave up probably by november last season to be honest i should probably given up on both fantasies by that stage last season but uh, yeah there we are um you ran a second poll uh, as we okay. said o- on the twitter page um we're probably going to speak about this one a lot less because it was quite overwhelming um again, in, in terms of the vote, but do you want to tell the people what the question was and how the voters voted? So, I noticed that Jamie McGrath has left Wigan after breaches in his contract or something on Wigan's behalf. So, free agent Jamie McGrath, previously of St Mirren, and uh, was on loan at Dundee United last season and scored some penalties, so very good for him. So, I asked... Just plain and simple, would you be happy happy if Aberdeen signed Jamie McGrath now that he's left Wigan? As it, if the poll still goes, if you want to have your say on there, go for it at RTG underscore podcast. But 1,291 people have voted. 34% have said yes, meaning that 66% people would not be happy with Jamie McGrath uh, if he was signed. However, I do agree with... Uh, CJMT on Twitter who said, Is there a not bothered choice? Be a sound <laughs> squad player, but I'd neither be happy nor unhappy. And to be honest, maybe that's maybe that's where I am with uh with with Liam Scales as well. What are you chuckling at? Um just that assessment because I think it's quite quite amusing. But I want you to also read out what Martin Stone replied as well. Um because he was very much to the point on his opinion on whether or not we should sign Jamie McGrath. Yes, I, I neck. he's been mentioned twice this episode. What's going on? Yeah. Uh, Martin Stone said to the Jamie McGrath poll, anyone voting yes needs their head checked. He was fucking root for United <laughs> last ass uh, season. So he's so angry, he wasn't even making sense. Uh, total bottle merchant, no chance we should be looking at him. You know what? Fair enough. And then he said he's dog shit. <laughs> Done nothing barring a brief purple patch at St. Mirren. Yeah. And look, everybody's entitled to their own uh, opinion. And uh, good to see a lot of people exercising their democratic right to vote in Twitter polls. It's yeah. like election night on the BBC here. Um, but at least yeah. most of these results turn out better than a general election. Um, I'm with Martin uh, on this one. And that's why I said I'm going to limit you to one. Jamie McGrath's total fucking dog shit. <laughs> no, the, the... We shouldn't be signing him. And why I'm going to limit you to one poll a week so you don't... Oh, um, but you create some good interactions. I'll give you that much uh, in terms of that. But um seems like a lot of people are also um, against Jamie McGrath signing um, in, in the comments uh, as well. Uh, and there was a couple of interesting comments as well in, in terms of replying to... The, the poll on Twitter saying that we've already got enough penalty takers uh, in the squad as well. But 
in terms of signing kind of players that played in the Premiership and playing in that position as well, that I'd rather have Marco Hara than Jamie McGrath. But then you've got to pay for Marco Hara, Jamie McGrath's free, and then we can spend 800,000 on leave scales. Come on! <laughs> um, I, look, I think I'm desperate at this stage. I really, I can really tell. Am. However, <laughs> I think since he would now be free, it's relatively low risk. If he was going to come in as a squad player, there is talk that we're looking for two attacking midfielders. Um, he would count as one, knows the league. If it goes to a penalty shootout, you can rely on him. Um, but a lot of people have raised concern also um, that he's turned us down and apparently previously. But how much were we really in for him? I don't know. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, it's about players that want to be at Aberdeen and I think given the fact he's turned them down before maybe he doesn't want to be here or yeah. he just knew how useless Jim Goodwin was and was like fuck that I was the way to say maybe he was actually just had some sense and was like I don't blame for that idiot again uh, so there we go yeah and um, this point came in earlier um, from Mark Leslie I think when we were speaking um, uh, about uh, Rocco Vata but it's kind of quite relevant and a, a point that I actually thought when I saw you put up that poll and wondered why my phone was lighting up like a Christmas tree and um, in, in terms of we need to give our young players more time we loved Baron until he wasn't so good now everyone wants rid of him I don't think everyone wants rid of him because he wasn't good I think it was there was kind of frustration around the contract situation um around Connor Barron and him not signing it. Um, but he goes on to say these young players will have ups and downs. Now, Connor is a player that has featured in pre-season. Do you think, Connor, we will see more of him this season? And, you know, bringing in someone like Jamie McGrath into that position would kind of hinder the development of players like Connor Barron. Uh, I think they're slightly different players. I know Jamie McGrath can certainly play deeper. Uh, however, I... Uh, if we were going to sign him, I'd imagine he would be more used as the attacking midfielder, one of them, um, when needed. Uh, I think it's important to have different different types of players. Um, Connor Barron, to me, more of that sort of six, eight, maybe box to box, box to box type of player, whereas McGrath might be more of an eight slash ten. So they are slightly different. There is mm -hmm. overlaps, but slightly different. Um, I think we will see him a lot more this season, a lot more games. Hopefully, he stays fit. I am still a little concerned about the contract thing because he comes in, does relatively well, but he can leave for free at the end of the year. Mm. Well, yeah. actually, we might be due some sort of compensation because of development, because of his age and all that nonsense. Well, are we not? Do we still get that though if he is out of contract? I think so. I think so. Who was it? Um, is that not what's happening with Max Johnston going away from Motherwell? His contract's up because I was listening to I... the BBC thing with Stuart Kettlewell and they said they should have signed him on a new contract. Mm. when they owned him to Cove, but they didn't, and now his contract's up. So they oh, yeah, yeah. In compensation. Yeah, £300,000 seems like an absolute steal for, for Max Johnson. So interesting to see how he gets on um, this season. But, yeah, um, you can see how desperate you are um, for a signing, judging by um, your actions on, on Twitter this week. Um, interesting to see kind of what comes, out, comes from this weekend uh, and the early parts of next week, because I'm sure, you know, like us as fans, Barry Robson's eager to get get players in the door before we kick off that league action uh, a week on Saturday. But I'm also eager to see that team line up this weekend as the Dons head to London to face Charlton in pre-season. Um, and whether or not the likes of Angus McDonald, Reese Williams get any minutes under their belt. Of course, uh, the weekend passed against Preston. Good to see Boyan getting more minutes. Um, as we said on our own social media channels last week, um, it looked to be that the Dons played a closed door friendly against For Martin, winning that one nil, and that was Boyan's first outing um, of preseason uh, minutes as well. Hopefully, we're not going to get in trouble for sharing any information, you know, that was unwanted, especially with that Rocco Vata rumor um, linked tonight. Um, but you know, we're getting to that stage now, Callum, where. There's going to be people that will be concerned. There's going to be people that will still be relatively calm that we're, we're 10 days out. And what's your general feeling just now? I'm excited. I'm very much excited. Uh, my tickets for the Livingston game have arrived. So I'm looking forward to the new season. I am a bit concerned about the state of play right now uh, at the back. Um, 
Well, no, no, I'm very much concerned. And I'm hoping that over the next week or so, um, we will see, I mean, at least one signing uh, mm. would be fantastic. Ideally, two or more at this stage. Is that one signing on top of the expected signing of Slobodan? Well, I mean, if there's one on top of him, I'm delighted. To be <laughs> honest, I'd just be happy with Slobodan uh, at this point. And just another uh, Balkan fellow we can just get nice and excited about. Yeah, no, I did see someone comment saying, surely there must be a decent left back in the Balkans that we can sign since we're scouting in that in that, in that that region. And I'm sure hopefully the club are, are doing something about that. And again, going back to Liam Scales, and I saw a couple of comments about the fact that is that going to be one that kind of drags out until the, the end of the, the transfer window as well? And I kind of hope not. But again, it, on Liam Scales, if he doesn't get in before this weekend against Livingston, He's not going to play against Celtic anyway, which is our second game. So hey, it's a, it's an interesting one. Um, on you go. Oh, no, I was just going to say it is. Um, it would be weird if we sign him, plays in the thing, then straight out again against Celtic. But I suppose if we are going to sign him permanently, then maybe there is a little bit more time then to haggle over over the fee and maybe bring it down slightly just yeah. to be a speculation. Yeah, I guess. Or maybe they're not. Uh, they're waiting till after we play them as well, just in case. Um, but I guess as well, it's the same for, for Rocco Vata. If you went and signed him on, on loan, you're immediately disadvantaged second game of the of the season uh, if he you know, came in and impressed against Livingston. And yeah, um, I've got my tickets for Livingston as well. Finally be able to tick off all premiership grounds as well because it's been a long time since I've well, never done Livingston and been waiting patiently to tick it off. You've never been to Livingston? No, am I missing out? Am I? No, you're, you're no. not. I'm surprised <laughs> because the amount of absolute shitters I've been there to see. Um, Dean Campbell's goal uh, stands out. I think James Wilson either scored in that game or another time. There was the one uh, around Christmas time last year that that was absolutely terrible. Um, possibly more. I, I I've been there a decent handful of times. Uh, not not a not a not a not the best away day, but. It's local to me, so I'm delighted uh, for 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 the weekend. Local to me for the weekend, yeah. <laughs> uh, and and also um, going to be bloody loads of us. So that that's nice. Isn't it? It'll be like a wee mini home game. It will be, and uh, hopefully, I think was it um, Alan Burrows saying it's going to be about four thousand. Hopefully. Uh, Aberdeen fans traveling down and you know sales have been going promptly so and I think we've got two buses going down although Stu's giving me a lift down uh, instead so looking forward to to that and um, getting back to to the real stuff even though the the trips to Tariff and Fraser have been good so far. Absolutely I mean thank god we're gonna have actual football to talk about and we're not just gonna have to you know, we're gonna have all, all this filler and nonsense that we've managed to string together. I know it's amazing how much we managed to fill an hour. I mean, fair play to the ABZ guys trying to fill two hours um, when it's a, a session like this with no nothing to talk about. Um, and we said we're unorganized and dysfunctional. Um, and thank you to those of you that do interact with the show uh, and keep us going in the comments as well because we nearly forgot about this. So um, Gregor Stevens raises the... Um, point about the alterations that are coming at, at Pataudry and I did actually have that in the notes I've just hidden them that's why I can't see them just now um so Callum did you see the clips on Sky Sports News this week um that that showed the new kind of scoreboards above well it's going to be above your head uh, in yeah. the south stand and then the the dugouts they're not going to have a roof over them well they don't currently um as shown on Sky Sports yeah, I saw people getting excited about it. I think the scoreboards look just so weird and out of place. Yeah. Uh, it, you know, but you know, it'll, get, it'll take a bit of time to get used to. I think the one of them, the fact that one of them was just bright yellow, probably was the fact it put me off uh, a little bit. It'll be interesting to see what the dugouts are looking like because you mentioned that they're going to have to remove the bench or something like that. Um, so what? What the fuck's everyone gonna sit? What's going yeah, on? Yeah, we're gonna have. I wonder if we're gonna have those like gaming F1 type chairs um, oh, right. in the away end or uh, away end in the dugout. Um, but yeah, no, I, I agree on the scoreboard. They looked so out of place, and as well with the yellow and red. I don't know if they were just trying to fit it in with the kind of weird seating colours that we've got in the south stand. But yeah, it did look a bit um, interesting. Um, what about the away end issue that has been kind of raised? 
Now, I want to kind of speak to you about this because as someone that sits uh, in Section S predominantly, um, quite close to the fence, RIP, mm -hmm. um, what's your feeling on the fence being removed and the away end being, I don't know how the right word to say, um, being changeable, I guess, um, in terms of size, depending on opposition? What a bloody faff all this away end lark has been lately, isn't it? Why can't they have just left things as they were in terms of everyone gets a decent enough allocation uh, and if, if you sell it out, maybe you might get a bit more. Or if you don't sell it out, then maybe tickets will get given back. It's all too much to keep up with at this stage. I think the fact that, you know, for example, let's say Livingston, Ross County, you aren't going to bring much up. If there is demand for us, we then are flexible to sell more tickets to Aberdeen fans. Is that going to happen realistically? Are we going to be sold out against Livingston? Is it required? I don't know. Um, the fact the fence is gone is heartbreaking because this, the fence not going to be there for Celtic and Rangers. They will still get the same amount of tickets, but it's not going to be a fence. Yeah, so I, I'm really interested to see how they're going to manage that. Although, That's admittedly, when... Sorry, but it, that will be a recipe for disaster. If the fence isn't there and it's just some weak tarpaulin sheet, it's not going to end well. Yeah, but you've got to remember, when we go to Parkhead, it's literally just red and white police tape, effectively, that separates us. Albeit, it's the family stand, so it's not quite the same as Section S. Um, but I did have that wonder as well. And that, to be fair, the fence has kind of been ruined for a while with the, the G4S tarpaulin that was between the away fans and the, the fence as well, kind of ruined any sort of um, banter, I guess, that you get from the, the surges. Mm. Um, certainly that you'll have experienced in the kind of last couple of seasons. But I, I did wonder how the club are going to do it. And it's quite interesting, the fact that they're not going to have that ready until into September. So I think the fence will still be in play for the game against Celtic. Um, yeah. But... Very much reading from that statement um, from the club, it sounds very much like the club are looking to do reciprocal sort of deals with clubs. So, and I very much felt this was aimed in hearts without naming them. So if you're going to give us 650 or 700 tickets um, because you've got a 7,000 waiting list, then fucking hell, um, then we're only going to give you 700 back, which, you know, has obviously generated a lot of, feeling about the fact that we never sell out a, a home game mm. um and you know we've got to make it clear because a lot of celtic and rangers fans began to lose their shit when this got um announced if thinking that lead, yeah. yeah exactly but again just shows the how quickly people are influenced on social media by a simple clickbait headline when i think it was the daily record said that we're going to slash the away into 300 and suddenly half of glasgow thought well, we're, we're not going to be able to come up to the game. I mean, they never leave their armchair for a game in the first place, so I don't really know why so many of them were getting wound up. Um, but it's going to be flexible per team. So, I mean, I hate to think, you know, for the likes of Ross County, Livingston, again, with the greatest respect to them, I mean, probably Livingston, you know, could bring up a decent support if they wanted to, but how little of that section is going to be. But on the away end as well, do you think if you were a walking, a walk up customer, if you were going up with your family, mm -hmm. you know, because the club said they want to give, you know, better seats to the home fans so they're undercover and not in section Y, I would actually rather be in section Y than sitting undercover in between section S and the away fans because one section Y has a better view. Mm -hmm. And if I was certainly going with, my family, would I necessarily want to be sat there next to the away fans? Again, probably again depends on who we're playing, but I didn't quite agree with that sentiment of the statement. Well, let's say it is hearts, and if we do reduce them to 600, for example, then that's a potentially decent attended game, and as you say, walk-ups for families. If that's the only place to put them, um, it's it, it's not great, but stuck between you know the the fans at the uh, 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 that are usually used to be by the fence who enjoy a little bit of you know back and forth, and then mm. Hearts fans who've travelled up two and a half hours, absolutely hammered, and you know they'll be up a little bit of back and forth as well. 
awful place to put them. Awful place to put a family. Um, you know, maybe it won't be for all families, but some of them in there, and it's just it's just going to be a disaster. And so some of the Even, stewarding as well, as we know, it's quite well um, documented that sometimes uh, not the best. So mm-hmm. we'll just be added problems with it all. Um, and it's a bit of a nightmare. Uh, and I guess another issue for those of you in Section S, like yourself, Callum, is for those of you certainly further back, the like standing, how that's going to be influenced by the introduction of home fans into the what would be a weigh-in section and whether or not they also want to stand or sit down. You could end up having to sit down at home games, Callum. Has that thought crossed your mind? Because um, Stephen from my work wanted me to raise that point and I was like, well, Callum sits in Section S, so I'll happily raise it. I wish you hadn't because I hadn't <laughs> thought about it. Uh, no, um, that no, that's not possible. No, no, I'm just refusing to accept it. Uh, for years, people have been there standing. You know, I've been there for I don't know what five, six years at least. And you know, you get to know everyone around you. It's and there's a lot of still the same faces. Everyone's there, sort of standing. Recently, I have noticed there has been a bit more sort of change in sort of between games, sort of just people there for just one game or whatever, uh, depending on when they can go being there, which sometimes upsets the uh, natural um, equilibrium of, uh, of 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 the understanding. And um, it would grow grossly upset. I, I don't have to... At the back of the south stand, you shouldn't have to sit down. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, and I just... I I'm really interested to see how it works without the fence there altogether um, going forward. As you said, more so for when Rangers come to town, because I, I do believe it'll still be in play for when Celtic um, come up for the first home game of the season, judging judging by that statement. But I, if anyone doesn't think it's got disaster r- written all over it, and I mean, I know there's not a fence when we go down to, to Ibrox, but I mean, there is plenty of seats on both sides, but as well at Ibrox, there's also a metal barrier that, that runs between the the two stands. So in terms of access, if you want to, to say it to, towards home fans is pretty unavoidable. Um, although I'm sure you're pretty much welcomed up above and all around from certain ob- objects as well. Yeah, interesting to see if there will be a new PA system as well in the, in the South Stand and probably actually the whole fucking stadium. There's another point if you scroll down and find the comment as well. Um, there was an introduction of 3G along the side, so we're not going to have the gravel traps um, along the south stand and main stand side, which looked really weird uh, on TV. But again, I think that's another um, UEFA requirement. It just showed how much nonsense Stuart Milne was speaking um, when he said that, what was it? He said we had to go to Tanadice to play European games if we were, um, because of how run down Pataudry was. Um, and I think a lot of people as well are, you know, picking up on the point as well that these kind of developments or changes to Pataudry could maybe hint at a, a longer term stay at Pataudry or hint towards redevelopment um, of the current ground. But I know um, the club are keen to stress that we will still be moving away from Pataudry and um, maybe just towing the right line to keep the council on board. Um, but, you know, it's not going to be certainly anything immediate in, in terms of a move away as well. Um the, the capacity in the, the red shed as well has been increased for the season. I think it's just going to be just over 2,000, but still a 1,000 short um, of the full capacity of the stand. Feels pretty pointless, but feels like a bit of a tick box exercise from the club that they've met You know some of the demand for fans wanting to be in there, but not everybody's necessarily happy. Yeah, mental. Wasn't the talk that it was, just, it was going to be allo- officially allocated seating and then, you know, basically, nah, ha <laughs> you can sit in your seats, ha <laughs> ha like an away game, you just get a ticket, mm-hmm. whatever you want. What happened to that? That's not the case, because that would have led to more tickets being available, and now it's only 2,000. Uh, it's a bit of a bit of a nightmare, all of this, isn't it? Um, mm-hmm. A lot more to talk about, and, and uh, about the pitch and the surroundings, rather than what's going to be on the pitch right now, isn't there? <laughs> yeah, there is, but... Thank God there was that because otherwise this show would have probably been nine minutes, not fifty nine minutes um, at, at the at the time. But we've managed to to fit everything in that, that we wanted to. Do. And thanks to to Gregor for putting that in the comments because I would have absolutely forgotten to to mention that. 
um, and being really frustrated um, come the end of it. Um, but we're close. We're close to the start of the season. As I said at the, the top of the show, um, we'll be live. We're going to do it Wednesday. Uh, I know a few of you were disappointed mm-hmm. not to see us last night um, live here on the Red Tinted Glasses YouTube channel. So we will be back half seven next mm-hmm. Wednesday, live and direct with you here on the Red Tinted Glasses YouTube channel. Remember to like this video if you've been mm-hmm. watching tonight. Hit subscribe if you're new to the channel or um, watch and, and haven't done so yes, uh, so far. It is free to do. Thank you to all of you that have done so. We're now over 1,650 subscribers, so really do appreciate um, all that support. Uh, my preview for Aberdeen season is available in the preview um, magazine 442. Um, I did a, a, a answered a few questions. Please, if you're reading that, know that I had to submit the answers for that at the beginning of June. And um, that's how early that had to be in. Um, and also my preview for the season should be out in the Daily Mail um, next week as well. If it's an online piece, um, we'll be tagged in it on uh, Twitter. So that'll be retweeted and shared on um, social media as well for you all to get involved in. But do join us next week live on Red Tinted Glasses as we hopefully for Callum's sanity more than anything, have some signing, signings to discuss and we'll be joined by Talk Levy host Ewan Rankin to look forward to the first competitive action of, of the season. But thank you very much to all of you for tuning in tonight. See you next week. Bye.